Hello there, it's Mike with the Fish Tank Barn, and I'd like to welcome you back to another video. Unfortunately, over the past few days, things have been a little bit of a battle here in the Fish Tank Barn pertaining to the weather. So today's video is gonna be a little bit of a story time about how a tree branch almost took out the Fish Tank Barn. So let's go ahead and get into the story. This all started last Friday night, where we were forecasted to get about six inches of snow or so, which in Michigan really isn't that big of a deal. Unfortunately, because this was heavy snow, it caused the power to go out to our house and a lot of the houses in the surrounding area. This happens periodically, and it's usually back within 24 hours or less. So even though the weather is cold, the fish barn would have been fine. Since the power was out, I decided to go outside and free our cars from the garage, since we do have electric garage door openers. Unfortunately, when I took a few steps out, I heard the noise of a tree cracking and immediately went back into the house. And unfortunately, I saw this big branch fall onto our power and cable lines. Needless to say, a small problem kind of became kind of a big one. The way that our power company works is they restore power to the largest areas without power first and then go back to the individual houses later. So now unfortunately, with the tree on the power line, we become one of those individual houses. And to make matters worse, temperatures were plummeting to near zero degrees Fahrenheit weather, which is definitely not good for the fish barn. One thing I do want to make note of here is I do have access to a generator, but unfortunately, where the generator hooks into the house is right near the power line. So that kind of made the generator situation unusable. When I designed the fish barn five years ago, I went through my mind and kind of mapped out all kinds of different disasters that could take place. And the most difficult disaster I came up with was a prolonged power outage in the winter. The barn is heated with electric, so this is why this would be a problem. And unfortunately, I really didn't have any alternative heat sources. So we were looking at kind of a major problem here in the fish barn. So that night I went to bed with no power and was definitely upset at the possibility of losing all the fish in the fish barn. So we wake up the next morning and my daughter has a volleyball tournament. So I decided to take her to the tournament to get my mind off of the fish and my wife stayed home and managed things in the house. Thankfully, as we were finishing up the volleyball tournament, my wife texted that the power company was there and was cutting the tree up and taking care of the power lines. So thankfully, the power company came through and disaster was avoided. So now let's talk about how I decided to handle the barn after the power outage. I made the decision to go ahead and wait until the next day to go into the fish barn and check on the fish. The reason I did this is I didn't want to slow up the heating process of the barn. If I were going in and out of the barn as normal, it would just make it more difficult for the barn to warm up and possibly cause further harm to the fish. So the next day when I did go back to the barn, unfortunately there were some losses. The biggest loss was my purple ACI and yellow lab tank, where I lost about 75% of the fish. Unfortunately, this was my fault because I didn't have enough heaters in this tank, and this tank really didn't have a chance to get heated up. When I put my hand in the tank, it was freezing cold, and unfortunately that was what killed all the fish. So I went ahead and added more heaters to that tank, so hopefully we won't have that problem here in the future. Now unfortunately with the purple ACI tank, there are still a couple of individual fish that are showing some signs of distress, so I might have some more losses before that tank is finally settled down. The other tank that did have some losses was my 75 gallon tank, with my Trophius Maplungu. I only lost a few individuals in this tank, which I'm gonna to relate to stress. When I put my hand in this tank, this tank was at typical temperatures. So I think that was just a stress related issue with the tanks getting cold and then warm again. So thankfully, I'm not foreseeing any more losses in this tank. Thankfully, all the other fish made it through unscathed. I even had my blue Hawaiian Moscow guppies drop some fry during the power outage, which I thought was quite interesting. So now that we're done with the story, I kind of want to talk about what went right and kind of what went wrong. The one thing I did think I did right is I really did think it was a good idea to not go into the fish barn until after it warmed up. I think it would just cause more stress for the fish if I were going in and out of the barn, making it harder for the barn to heat up. So I definitely think that was a good move. I mean, the obvious thing here is I am going to need to research some sort of alternative heat source for the winter because with the low temperatures that we were experiencing, it would have been a catastrophic loss if the power had not come back on. So I'm definitely gonna go research a propane heater or some other sort of heat source, see if I can get this barn warmed up without electricity. And maybe I'll make some modifications to the heater by putting a plug on the end of it, and maybe I can plug it into a generator or something too. But I'll have to go ahead and do some research on that and figure out what I'm gonna do. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how the fish barn withstood the power outage and the subsequent cold weather that we've been experiencing. One thing I do wanna briefly talk about though, is another loss that I experienced before Christmas that I really just haven't had a chance to tell you about. And that's my 245 gallon African cichlid tank, which unfortunately is a total loss. 
Before Christmas, I really started to notice that these fish were going downhill fast, and unfortunately, despite my efforts, there really wasn't anything I could do to save them. They were getting kind of like a mucusy fungus on them, and they were dropping within about 24 hours or so. So I went ahead and pulled all the driftwood out of this tank, and obviously removed all the dead fish. And I'm gonna go ahead and let this tank sit fallow for about a month or two before I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna do next. What I'm thinking currently is I'll probably move my Malawi Barracuda into this tank, since this is a larger tank than the current 180 that they're living in. So I think this tank would be a good fit for them. And then I'll repurpose the 180 they're living in and maybe put in the remaining ACI or yellow labs, or maybe putting in a colony of Trophius. I'm not sure which one I'll do yet, but we'll go ahead and cross that bridge when we get there. Now after that, I really want to redo the tank that the Mabuna are living in because I really don't like the substrate. This tank just gets really dirty. It has a lot of algae in it. So I really want to redo this tank, change the substrate, add some plants, and maybe I'll add a large colony of live bears into this tank. Maybe even my Amica Splendens, or maybe my Trout Godia colony, one of the two. Since those are both really large colonies, and I think they'd do well in a 125 gallon tank. But I'm gonna go ahead and wait to do that until the weather gets warmer and I can do some things outside. And one other thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna replace all the fish nets in the fish barn. I've already bought the nets, so I just need to go through the barn, and either sterilize or throw out any of the nets that I currently have. I really don't want to have any disease transferring to any of the other tanks in the fish barn, so I think totally wiping it clean and starting over would be the best move for that. While this is not a perfect update, I just wanted to be truthful and kind of give everyone an honest update on all the things that were happening with the fish barn, from, from the power outage perspective, the cold weather, and unfortunately the loss of the 245 gallon tank. Ever since we purchased this house, having fish out in that building has always been kind of a dream of mine, and thankfully I was able to make that come true. But since we're dealing with nature and the elements, these things sometimes happen, and unfortunately it's kind of part of the deal when owning a large fish room outside in a northern climate. And you just have to do your best to manage the situation in the moment. So obviously I'll be doing some thinking on how to improve things in the fish barn over the coming months, and I'll let you know what I decide. So with that, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.